Hello, welcome to Excel Highway. In today's video, I want to share with you a stock traders tracker I created on Google Sheets that I think you will find very useful. Using this tracker, you can see what you bought, what you sold, what's your total value, are you at a profit or a loss, etc., etc. So if you're interested in this kind of content, please stick around. I'll walk you through how I built this. So there's a few sheets here. There's the portfolio sheet, which is a summary that shows you your position currently. There's the stock report that you can use to identify your past purchases and where they stand. Purchase stock is where you can report, you can analyze a certain stock that you're interested in purchasing and report that you bought it. Sell stock, sell one of your stocks. Copy of transaction, it's a behind the scenes sheet that you don't need to do anything. And the transaction history, which logs everything that you report, buy and sell. So let's start with the purchase stock. So the purchase stock, you just enter a symbol like Tesla, for example, and it's going to show you um, the closing date for whatever time range that you decide. You have this nice chart over here and you have the linear um, trend line. Plus, you can see your max closing and your minimum closing value for that period and how today's number, which is over here, compares. So you can see that today's price, 337 is $140 less than the max, which was somewhere in December, somewhere over here. So that's just some metrics. Uh, you can decide how much shares you want to buy. And this is what you're going to pay. There's a purchase fee that you can set up. And it will also flag if this is above your available. Because over here, you invest, you wanted to invest 55,000, and currently you have about 20,000 left. So if I want to purchase something like in this value, I don't have the funds. And that's going to raise a flag for you, but also it's going to block the code that's here. So let's say I want to buy this. Uh, if I click on uh, buy, what will happen? I will just create a new line in the transaction history for that um, for that uh, purchase. Let's go over the formulas real quick. So the date is today. Um, let's just use capital letters, forgive me, Elon. The current price, I'm using Google Finance function with price. Google Finance has a lot of options, which we'll see a few. Total value, shares times price. This is fixed because this is always going to be a buy record. Purchase ID. This is going to be a unique ID for this uh, purchase line. So it's just the max number here on the previous IDs plus one. So I always know I have a unique value. Shares owned. Just as a reference, do I own this stock? So I'm just going to summarize the transaction history. Okay, so it's this column over here for this stock symbol, sorry, remaining value, because that's the remaining. We'll see later how that's calculated. And value owned at the above ability. I'm just checking if the total value is greater than portfolio B5. That's this area over here. Here I'm using Google Finance. So I want the closing stock, and I'm referencing two dates and daily interval. And that builds you this nice table over here. Max is, of course, max. Minimum is not minimum. Max date, I'm going to use match for the value and use index. Same. Um, today versus max, this minus this. And today versus minimum, this versus this. And, of course, a chart. Uh, hopefully, you know how to build a chart. So that's a simple chart with a trend line. So once I click on buy... It'll show me finished script, and you see immediately now shares owned are showing as 13. And let's say, just to show you what happens if I'm above availability, I get this message, not enough funds to purchase stocks. And it will not process my order. Let's go to transaction history. So now you see this is the purchase I made right now. 
date, the price, the number of shares, the value, the ID, the unique ID, and it will also show me in the future if I sell this specific ID, what's remaining. So that's the purchase stock. How did I build the code? I actually used ChatGPT to build most of the code. Not very good with the app script. So I used ChatGPT and made some adjustments. Um, so it's a very simple prompt. Basically, I'm taking this um, section a2 through, where is it, A2 through H2, and I'm going to paste it over here in the last row. It's a very simple code. That's what you see over here. Okay, taking this, finding the last row, next row, and then just pasting it. This is just checking if the sheets exist or not, because if it don't exist, it just stops. And this is a check if K2 is equal to yes. And you just get this pop-up message and stops the uh, code. And lastly is copying the formulas in the transaction history. Over here I have formulas for the buy lines uh, that I want to copy. So that's what that last part does. So it's a copy-paste um, with the formulas. So that's the code for the buy to buy the stocks. That's number one. Now let's say I want to sell stocks. So again, blue is where you change. So I have stocks that have remaining value. So let's say I select my Google. Heads up, all right, don't see it again. So let's say I select Google. Um, that warning message is for um, cells that you should not change, the orange ones. So it's just a message, a warning message. I'll show you how to do it later. So let's say select Google so you can see previous purchases made by me, previous price, the number of shares, what was the value, what's the current value, because this is the current price. So it's the, okay, the delta, how much shares I want to sell. I have this tick box. If I click it, it's just going to put all the shares instead of typing them. And then this is the sell value, and this is going to be the delta. So how is this built? Um, current price, again, Google Finance. This is going to be sums of the rows below. Then I have a filter. I have a filter for the transaction history, and I'm using brackets because I have a few conditions. I want to check um, lines where column A is equal to the ticker, Column G is buy, and column J is greater than zero. Okay, ticker, buy, and remaining shares greater than zero. Because I don't want to see, I can't sell what I don't have in my inventory. And if error, so if I have nothing, just to show nothing. That's going to return those three. Number of shares, I'm going to take column J, same function. Purchase value, that's going to be the number of shares remaining times the purchase price. Current value, current price, times number of shares. And the delta between them. Now, the delta is, for all through the file, the delta is going to be um, conditional formatting. If it's greater than zero, green. If it's less, then it's red. Very simple, right? If, or is it less than or greater than? zero and you change it okay very simple to do it just gives you a nice view of if you're in a profit or loss this is manual um, now if I want to sell more stocks more shares than I have it's going to give me this message value in column H cannot exceed the value in column D and I'm going back to the app script here I called it update ticker. So I have an on edit. On edit means that this function runs whenever you edit something in the file. But I want to be very specific. So only for a sheet called sell stock and only if the rows are greater than four. Because if I want to make changes in the headers or something, I don't want it to freak out. So what it checks is checks if if the checkbox um, uh, was checked, right? 
so this. If it was checked, then it's going to get the value from column D. All right, and just paste it because I want the maximum. If it's unchecked, I'm just going to clear it. Okay, so it's also a nice way to clearing the, um, the cell. Okay, so check, retracts column D, paste it over here. Second option, if there's a manual update in column A, like I did, so it checks the two values. So if value in A is greater than value in D, so age and D, okay, that's those two. And it will, worst case, will bring back the column, uh, the value in D, and give you this message. Okay, so if you put your 5, then you get this message, and it brings it to 3, which is the maximum. If I click the cell button, what will happen, basically I have a sheet here, which just was easier for me to use the code copy of transaction. So you have the stock symbol, um, the transaction date, the price, number of shares, the value, da, 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 da. basically you have, I want to show you that if it's empty, it's, it's going to filter, just show me that the second line. Okay, so I have a filter for that one. I have the transaction date, which is today transaction price which is static because it's the same value number of shares this is again a filter transaction value multiply those two fees coming from this cell over here all right cell type and purchase ID also a filter and I, the reason I built that is just for making it easier for building the code for how to clicking on the cell button over here so if you click on the report cell so what this does basically it's going to just copy the, val the the data right you're you're signaling what the three sheets are copy transaction transaction history cell stock get the data from a to g okay I want to copy that and I want to check if it's a blank because sometimes I won't be selling anything and just by mistake okay let's say I don't have anything and I click the button I don't want anything to be copied so that's why I'm checking if there's a blank find the last row just like before and paste the values and I also want to clear after that this area make it ready for the next reporting so let's just show you how it looks We'll take two and one and click on cell. And you see immediately the number of shares here were changed. Transaction history. You can see the two lines over here. Okay, so that's how we sell stock. And by the way, you can also see if I sell all my stock. I will see nothing here and also you can see this message that all of a sudden I can't select Google anymore. This, let me show you this message. So protect sheet, if you click on protect sheet and ranges, okay, I, I should have selected B1 through B2, okay. All right, that should work. Anyway, um, if you just if you want to show people messages that sh they shouldn't touch cells with their formulas you can do what I did I'll let it um, refresh and then I'll show you uh, what it looks like and that was how to sell the stock um, did we look at everything here I think we did Filter, number of shares. Yeah, I think we, we covered everything here. All right. Um, copy of transaction. That is the filter we talked about. The available stock. I'm using sort, unique, and filter, all three, on the range in transaction. I just want to see the ones will remaining value is greater than zero. 
I'm going to filter, then unique, so it's just one value, and sort, so it's sorted alphabetically. The transaction history, most of it is just the data. And then we have the formulas. So the formula is going to show me how many shares were sold, how much is remaining. So shares sold is just a simple sum if. I'm looking for the ID number. So sum ifs for column D. For age is age four. So I'm looking for rows that are the same purchase ID. The column G is sell, and only for rows that are buy. So I don't want this to appear over here. So that's the sold shares. The remaining shares is the difference. Remaining value is the current price times the remaining share. And the current price is the Google Finance. And that's how you get the remaining value. So that's transaction history. Let's take a look at the stock report. So drop down list. just from the transaction history. It's going to show me all the stock that I ever purchased. I will see the ID for the purchase, the date, the price, how many shares were purchased, at what value, how much were sold from that ID, how much are remaining, remaining value, sold, and the delta, which is what was purchased minus what was sold and what its value do now. So is it at a profit or not, this is was purchased today, so no difference. See the total over here. Let's take a look at the formulas. So I'm using a filter for column age to for the ID, then B through E. That's going to cover all of these. Then filter for I through K. And this, yeah, I through K. So those three. Sold value is going to be a sum ifs of the transaction column E. All right, so just for the lines where it's sell, and the delta is the difference. Over here on the top is just the sum of all of that. Okay, so that's, you can just use that, and you see here, so if it's a loss, it's in red. If it's a profit, it's in green. That's the stock report. The portfolio, which is the summary, this is a number, stock purchased, negative sum ifs for column E for all the lines that are by. Stock sold, everything which are, well, column G is a sell. Fees is just the sum of column F, and both are negative because that's money coming out. Funds left is what you started, minus the stock purchases, plus sold, minus fees. Value is just column K. Okay, the remaining value. Total value, that would be the funds remaining plus the stock value. Profit or loss, that's going to be the delta. Added a formula here. If this is if this is greater than this, make sure it says profit, otherwise loss. So if I'm going to just do it like this, so you see now it says loss. Stock ticker, sort unique, right, giving me all the tickers. Stock purchased, similar to this. Similar formula just has... The sum if also checks for the ticker name in column A, so what was purchased, what was sold, the value, the current value, and the delta. Then you can see by ticker which where, where you made more money, where you made less money. All right, uh, that's it. I hope uh, you enjoyed the content and you learned something from that. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you next time.